This is a 2001 Jeep Cherokee Sport. This is a left hand drive Jeep, not a right hand drive. So the radiator is different and some of the procedures is different for the passenger side drive. Has 103,000 miles on it, straight six in it. I recently had a heater core put in it. A factory thermostat and an aftermarket water pump and the temperature is still kind of hot it's been overheated multiple times and it runs good it doesn't have a mist after sitting overnight the hoses do get some pressure on them but I don't see any bubbles coming out of the reserve and once it hits 223, this electric fan runs all the time. So I'm going to target the radiator being stopped up. Since the heater core had a hole in it, I'm assuming the system was probably pretty dirty. A lot of corrosion involved. I'm going to take this electric fan out of here. It's got five sixteenths holding it under these hose clamps. Lift that fan out and start this up. And as soon as the upper radiator hose starts getting hot, I'm gonna fill down the face of the radiator, the whole length of it, from top to bottom, and see how much of it's getting hot. If the bottom's staying cold, I know the radiator's stopped up. These fans are giving off heat, it's just not enough to cool the vehicle off. has a good heater too, so the water pump's circulating. I'm thinking the radiator's probably stopped up any. It's one of the heads not cracked or warped. What's it looking like? There's a couple of body clips on the bottom holding it in place. Transmission lines, radiator. Okay, I'm in there. This radiator is 10 and 3 quarter inches high by 31 inches, measuring the core area anyway. The overflow tube hooked back out. No pressure on it. Starting to get warmed up. The hose is generally lukewarm, but a little hotter close to the engine. up to operating temperature, I guess. When the firm set open first opening, this hose will get hot. And then that's when I want to check the radiator. Oh, it's, it's hot now. Yep. Just 
the bottom is nice cold. Just the top half of it's hot. Nice and hot up to the top here, but this part is cold. Okay, good enough. The entire radar should have progressed to being hot pretty close to the top part. Not just by conducting down through the fins. The bottom's cold. Hot up at the top. Yeah, it's not carrying enough heat off. Shut it down, let it cool off, and drain the antifreeze out of it after it gets cool. Before putting a new radiator in your Jeep, flush it. Flush the Jeep. See all that debris laying in the fill neck. That is throughout the engine, and it will stop up your new radiator and or stop up the cooling effect the antifreeze has on the motor. What I'll do to get to the drain on the radiator, take the passenger headlight bezel loose, two screws in it, lift it out of there, and the drain's right right off to the side there. I'll take this heater core pipe off here and put an extension piece of hose away from this coil pack over over to the side here. And I'll take this upper radiator hose loose here and just push it down the back. And then I'll take this electric fan out, 2 5 16 and pull it up out of there and unplug it. Take the lower radiator hose off. Put the radiator cap back on it and put the garden hose on this lower radiator hose, a garden hose. And force water backwards through the radiator till it's coming out this upper radiator hose down there for a good uh, minute or two. And then hook the hose up to this hose going to the heater core. And let the water back flush out of the heater core down into this housing and throughout the engine and out the water pump inlet. Make sure the little radiator hose is off of it. Be sure and flush all the antifreeze out of it and catch the antifreeze when you drain it first and recycle it and flush it with water. And then I'll just be using a a radiator flush and drive it drive it for a couple hours every day or a few hours for a few days let it cool off just be sure and add your flush to the radiator before you start putting water in it so you can get all of it in there then drain the flush out of it fill it full water back flush it. I'm going to take these hoses off again and flush that radiator cleaner out. Got the lower radiator hose off. I'm starting by flushing the driver's side of the tank. And 
cap's clean, Let's get the cap back on it. Pull that radiator hose up, Just make sure you don't run the clamp into the radiator. I'm gonna put the garden hose to it, Come back flush the radiator, got the upper radiator hose loose from the thermostat housing. So I'll pressurize this side of the radiator, it'll go across and come back up and catch it in that bucket down there. Just see what kind of trash was in it. Okay, I've back flushed the radiator until there's clean water running out of this upper radiator hose from the lower radiator hose. Now I got this heater hose taken off. That's just an extension in case any water comes out. I really don't want them on the spark plug boots. I'm gonna put a garden hose on this hose. Goes to the back flow of the heater core down into the engine. The water's gonna come out of the water outlet on the water pump when I'm back flushing it through this heater core. That's a new heater core in it so it's not stopped up or anything. Just back flush it to a clear water coming out of the water pump inlet. you clean out your reserve tank all the debris out of the bottom of it the electric fans already out of here and the overflow clamps with bolt run across the fan shrouds I'm going ahead and taking the Vistas clutch fan shroud off and has two more 516 bolts and Looks like I got another hole down over here on the passenger side. I was looking at the belt routing to make sure the water pumps turn in the right direction, and it is, just in case. It was spinning backwards or something, but it's not. I'm going to take this shroud loose and just push it back out of the way for the moment. And it's open a little gap up. I'm going to start working on this header panel and these radiator isolator nuts. I'll take them loose. One here, one there. And I'm going to take these two end bolts out here. And looks like the driver's side's got three of them on it. And some nose clip bolts. On the driver's side, I've taken the three upper radiator header support bolts out on the driver's side. The fan shrouds are already loosened up or removed from the header support. Uh, these two radiator hold downs or nuts are taken off. And this battery hold down and two other bolts on this upper header support are coming out. And I've loosened all the nuts on the nose piece. I'm going to just go ahead and take those off. That and put up a fight. This is a radiator isolator. It's a little 10 millimeter nuts. Now the upper radiator header plate is off, 
There's a 5 16 supporting the transmission line in the center of the radiator. Feel free to take it out at any time. There's some mounts on the bottom radiator holding the condenser to it. They'll have to get accessed. I went ahead and took the two screws out of the passenger side headlight bezel to get to the drain back in there in the radiator. I went ahead and took the two screws out of the parking light to get it to drain for the radiator. It really helped a lot to pull on that while I twisted it. I just keep kind of twisting and pulling on at the same time. I guess it moving. Let's see what kind of trash comes out. It looks a little rough in there already. Lots of debris. What you'd expect to see in a damaged radiator that's plugged up. Trash. And pulled back on it. Slipped this fan shroud out from around the vista's clutch. Just had to get it over this extreme passenger side lower mount for the shroud first and then slip it right up between the fan and the radiator. And feel free to loosen the transmission lines up at any time. This upper one's a 19 millimeter and you'll have to have a fuel line disconnect tool to get the bottom one off like one of these or you can take and cut a hose clamp in a circle and make make one it's mostly circle anyway I took the 11 millimeter cat nuts off of the upper condenser isolator mounts little thin twisties there cat nuts to let the condenser free and now I'm going to pick the radiator up out of its bracket on the lower isolator mount there's nothing holding it down it's just sitting in two holes on the lower radiator sport cross member I've fixed a 3 8 one of these line removers out I've inserted it into the line. Just push the line forward a little bit and pull that connector into it. Now be sure you have a rag underneath of it because you're going to have some transmission fluid draining out of the cooler from here or there. Over there. Looks like quite a bit of it. Let's let that drain. You'll likely need to know the measurements of your radiator before ordering a new one. This one's 31 inches from core to core. About ten and three quarter inches tall. And since this is a left-hand drive, 
It'll have to be ordered for left hand drive. And something else you can check for when the upper header plates off. Check for debris blocking the radiator. It's not not enough to cause any problems in this one. A lot of times leaves and city trash will get caught up against this on other vehicles. I don't know about this particular type. And cause problems or a clogged up condenser. This ain't so bad. I went ahead and took a pair of pliers and compressed this clamp on the upper radiator hose and took it off the upper radiator pipe. It looks kind of rough in there. The radiator's done draining. I just need to take these other lower radiator hose off and pull the radiator up free from the condenser. It's sitting around the stubs, the isolators for the lower part of the radiator. See, yeah, the radiator just slid right out of there. The condenser's sitting on these isolator mounts. So the radiator just lifts right up out of there. It's really restricted. I try to blow through here and it's pretty pretty hard to get through it for the top heating up and the new radiators here looks like I'm going to take these upper isolators off the old one Eight millimeter, five sixteenths on either side, two of them. That's about it, luckily. Check, make sure it's got the lower fan mounting slots in it. Yeah, it does. Mission line hookups. Okay, transfer some parts here. This was a major contributor to the Jeep's overheating problem. I took a metal cutting bandsaw and cut the tank off on the inlet side or the, the flow entering the radiator. And that's why the bottom wasn't distributing any heat and barely the top